Good morning, Light of Life West Children's Ministry. My name is Regina, and we are um, doing our lesson today, um, our fourth lesson, fourth week series on what would Jesus do. This lesson is entitled Stand Up for What's Right. So I'm going to open us up in prayer. Um, again, welcome to those of you online and those of you who are here in the room. So let's bow our heads. Heavenly Father, Thank you so much for bringing us into your house today, Lord. Thank you for amazing worship. Thank you for all of the people who actually were able to physically come into the room and those who are also watching online. Um, Jesus, we just give everyone um, the open hearts. We, we hope that people have open hearts and open minds to hear your word and your lesson today. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Okay, so we are doing our lesson four on standing up for what's right. This is good. I actually think it's really great that we're doing this also right before you guys go back to school in a few weeks. You guys probably have school in the next two to three, four weeks. And so this is a good reminder about um, behaviors that we should be having, whether it be in school or at home. So first and foremost, um, we're going to Make sure that you guys understand the reason for this lesson and why we're talking about it. So every day we are faced with hundreds of decisions, everybody, that we have to make at school, at home, with your friends, at church, um, everywhere, right? And some decisions are very easy and some decisions are very hard, right? So what are some decisions that are easy? Just name something that you think, something that you wake up and this is an easy decision. Janae. Playing on your phone. Playing on your phone. That's an easy decision? Yeah, it is easy. Eden. Um, I was actually going to say something about ice cream, but then you said waking up or um, getting dressed. Getting dressed. Easy decision. Lola. Being kind. Being kind. Yes, that is an easy decision. Not for everyone, right? But it definitely is a choice that you have to make, right? And then there's some decisions that are hard, right? Very, very hard. So a decision that's hard sometimes is, what am I gonna make for breakfast? Sometimes you have a lot of options, you don't really, really know what you wanna eat, right? So there's good decisions, there's easy decisions, there's hard decisions. So how can we be sure to make the right choice? What happens if we make a bad decision? It can be overwhelming. In those moments, we can ask, what would Jesus do, right? That's something that we've been learning about this whole series, this lesson of what would Jesus do. Jesus helps us make the right decision, right? Right? Yes. Okay, good. I hope so. How do we allow Jesus to help us make the right decision? Eden. We pray. We pray. Absolutely. We pray. What else do we do to help to have Jesus help us make the right decision. Lola. Follow his steps. Follow his what? Steps. Follow his steps. How do we follow his steps? What do we do? Where do you learn his steps? In your heart. And how do we, to learn Jesus' steps, what do you have to do to learn his steps? Believe in Jesus. Yep, yep, you do have to believe in Jesus. We also have to what? Read the Bible. Yes. We have to read the Bible. We have to be around people who are believing and living in the word so that we can remember to always follow his steps, right? To do the right thing. So Jesus stood for what's right. When we people are hurting and suffering, he, step, um, he steps forward and helps them. And when people are doing the wrong thing, Jesus would speak the truth and tell them. That's what happened the day Jesus arrived at the temple. The temple was the house of God, where people would come to pray and where people would offer sacrifices to God for their sins. So just like church, right? People come, they ask for forgiveness, and it's supposed to be a godly place. But the people had turned God's house into a market. They had turned it into just something that was not of God. They weren't doing the right thing. There were animals being sold for sacrifice. So instead of honoring God, they were making money off of people. 
and Jesus wouldn't stand for that. So you have to be very conscious, you guys, of the places that you enter that are supposed to be of God. And when they're not of God, you have to do what? Sometimes we have to stand up for what's right. We have to say something. Or sometimes you have to just remove yourself if that's not a place that you should be, right? So some, think of it as if you're going to school and you're on the playground, you're at recess and you see your friends doing something that they're not supposed to do, right? Have you guys ever been in that situation before and you're playing or you're doing something at school and the people are not doing something that they're supposed to do? What did you guys do in that scenario? Has anyone, does anyone wanna share an example of what they did? Eden. Well, I didn't do anything, but um, I was showing this um, new girl named Naomi around at school, and I showed her around the cafeteria, and then everyone was crowding around her and pushing me away from her, and I was like, um, guys, I'm supposed to be leading her, and then um, one of the persons said, Eden, just go, and then I was like so mad, well, not like mad, but I was like infuriated. Infuriated, so um, okay. And then Ms. Kenwood, she was like, Y'all better get out because Eden was supposed to be showing her the way. And I was like, and and then everyone was backing up. And then um and then um I was um and then we hit well, we hid in the hallway. Okay. So you were uh, being kind and showing the new girl around and the people, the other kids were crowding her, not making her feel comfortable, right? And so in that instance, you have to sometimes back away or go to another area, or sometimes you just see people or you hear your friends saying and doing things, right? I know that sometimes you might hear your friends at school saying bad words, you know, that it happens, okay? We're gonna be honest, we're gonna talk about the things that you guys hear. Sometimes you hear people saying not kind words, and what are you guys supposed to do? You're not supposed to be of that same energy, right? You guys are not supposed to do that. So you guys gotta be very conscious of that. So I'm gonna read you um, for what, so what happened when um, Jesus went into the temple. So it's coming from Matthew 21, uh, verse 12 through 16. Jesus entered the temple courts and drove out all who were buying and selling there. He overturned the tables of the money changers and the benches of those selling doves. It is written, he said to them, my house will be called a house of prayer, but you are making it a den of robbers. The blind and the lame came to him in the temple and, they healed, and he healed them. But when the chief priests and the teachers of the law saw the wonderful things he had did and the children shouting to the temple courts, Hosanna to the son of David. They were indignant. Do you hear what these children are saying? They asked him. Yes, replied Jesus. Have you never read? From the list of children and infants, you, Lord, have called forth your praise. And he left them and went out to the city to Bethany where he spent the night. So again, he went in there and made sure that they were doing what was right, right? Jesus stood for what's right. He turned over the tables drove out the merchants. He had to restore the temple to be the house of God. After that, people came to Jesus and he started to heal them. So once he was able to get all the bad things out and get the people out who were not doing the right thing, then good things started to happen, right? He started to see blind people and he healed them. And then the children sang the praises onto Jesus. And that's how they all continue to do the right thing too. So sometimes, Standing up for what's right can be very, very hard, you guys. When someone is getting picked on at school, so we just talked about this, it's hard to be the one who stands up and stops it. But it's the right thing to do, okay? When everyone is cheating on a class test, it's hard to stand out and not cheat. But that's the right thing to do, you guys. When we're scared to do the right thing, what is something that we can do to get strength if we're scared to do the right thing? What can we do to get that strength to do the right thing? Anybody want to take a guess other than Eden? <laughs> Maya. You can, like, if something's, if someone's doing bad and it's like your friends and you don't have, like, all the strength to tell them, you can, like, get some other friends and, like, tell them what they were doing so they can help them. That's a good idea. So Maya said, if you don't feel that you have the strength, you can maybe approach them, that group with other friends and tell them that they're not doing the right thing. So yes, first you probably want to pray to God and ask God for strength and make sure that you feel ready and prepared. 
But if you feel like you're not able to approach those people on your own, it's a good idea to bring a friend with you, right? It's a good idea to bring someone with you as a witness of you saying, hey, maybe this isn't something that we should be doing, you guys. That way you feel, there's always strength in numbers is what they say. The more people that are doing the right thing, the more people that will continue to do the right thing. So that's a good thing. So give, ask God for courage and strength is what you guys wanna do. He will give us what we need. Um, when you see something wrong, you can be the one who stands up for what's right. It's what Jesus would do, and it's what Jesus told us to do. So you guys, this is a decision that children and adults are faced with every single day. This is not just teacher Regina and all of your teachers telling this to you because you're children. This is stuff that we actually have to do ourselves. You know, we go out into the world as adults, and we're also faced with challenges. We're also seeing people sometimes do things that they're not supposed to do. And it takes a lot of courage for us to confront those people. So a funny thing, and maybe not so direct, right? But you know how cars have horns on them? Mm -hmm. And do you guys know usually when people use the horns? It's usually when someone's not doing what they're supposed to do, right? So you're at a red light, or you're, or you're at a stop sign and you see something happening and you beep, 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 you're honking the horn, you're saying stop, 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 or do you see me? Or it's a very indirect way of trying to help someone or trying to get someone to do what they're supposed to do. And then of course there's, there's more difficult things that sometimes you have to have a conversation with someone because maybe they're not doing the right thing. Or in the reverse, maybe you're not doing the right thing right? And someone has to have a conversation with you. How do you think that feels? Sometimes it can be hard to receive that feedback and receive that information. But when you're a child of God, you got to be open to that, right? You got to be open to receiving that feedback, especially if it's coming from a good place and it is coming from a person of God. So you guys got to know how to, you'll learn later, I'm sure one of our lessons, and as you get older about the discernment of people, and understanding the hearts of people who are who are talking to you, who are interacting with you, who is giving feedback to you, learning, learning their heart. Because anytime you're telling someone that they shouldn't be doing something, you don't have to do it in a mean way, you guys. You don't have to be rude about it. You don't gotta be angry about it. You should do it in a what way? How should you be telling someone? Eat it. Um, how should you approach someone? Like in a kind and way and very calm. Yeah, kind and calm and loving way, right? Because we are lovers of people. We're lovers of all of God's people. Caleb. In a way that you want to be treated. In a way that you want to be treated is right. So if I was the one doing something that was wrong or offending someone or not being of God and someone was approaching me, I don't want them to yell at me and tell me that I'm doing something. I want them to, in a loving, kind way, say, hey, Sister Regina, I saw you doing X, Y, and Z, or maybe I can help you with this, right? Because that's how it's received well. And that's how people know that you're coming from a really good place, right? That's called being kind and having a loving way of giving someone feedback. So this is really good. You guys are, are learning a really good lesson today. And again, I think it's good because you're about to go back to school and you're going to get faced with these challenges all the time. Again, we opened up the lesson and said you guys make hundreds of decisions every single day. So it's one of those things that you just don't even think of. You wake up and you're just making a decision every day. You decide what kind of shoes you're gonna wear. You decide how long you're gonna brush your teeth in the morning. You decide, you know, what you're gonna eat for lunch. So every day you have the opportunity to make good decisions. And when you see someone else not making a decision, you can choose to step in, you don't have to, but God would want you to step in if you're able, okay? Does that make sense? Any questions? Do you guys think that you're gonna be able to go out into the world and make good decisions every day? Yes? Do you think that you're gonna be able to stand up for what's right? Good, good, that's what God calls us to do. All right, good. So I'm gonna close this out in prayer and then we will get into our uh, craft for today and our Bible verse. Actually, I'll read the verse and close this out in prayer. So our memory verse is, let us not become weary in doing good, for at the proper time, we will reap a harvest if we don't give up. And that is coming from 
Galatians 6, 9. We'll reap a harvest if we don't give up. That means we will see all that God has called us for, that we will receive all that he has given us. We will win. We will be successful if we continue to do these things, right? Okay, so I'm going to close this out in prayer. Heavenly Father, thank you so much for your word today, Lord. Help us to continue to choose good and to continue continue to do what's right when faced with those uh, opportunities and those decisions every single day. Lord, we know that every single day is a choice to walk with you and be for you. Lord, help us to be loving and kind in our ways. Help us to be open to receiving feedback when we may not be on the path of doing what's right. Jesus, we thank you so much for your word and your direction. And we know that if we follow your word, that we will continue to go closer to you and that we will be followers of you and loving people in this world. We thank you everything for everything. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Good. Thank you so much.